So Corsair recently announced the Virtuoso Pro headset, and it's a pretty ballsy release for 2023 for a few different reasons. One, it's an open back headset format, so it's got a detachable mic. Open back is something we see in a lot of headphones, we don't see it a lot in headsets. Two, it's wired. I was really hoping for wireless because wireless convenience and some gaming centric features like chat mix are really some of the few reasons to go with a gaming branded headset. If you're going wired, it's usually best advice to go with an audiophile headphone or an IM. Three, it's priced at $199.99 and that puts it in some very deep water when it comes to competition. The drop-in EPOS collab, the PC38X, has been my long-standing recommendation for this format and they're usually priced at only $169.99. They're significantly cheaper now, but the recent announcement that EPOS is pulling out of the gaming space leaves the future of this headset in question. For those with a different mic solution, the most popular open back choices remain the DT990 Pro from Bayer Dynamic at $169.99, the drop-in Sennheiser HD58X also at $169.99, or the Sennheiser HD 560S, currently priced at $179.99. So at $200, it's safe to say that the Virtuoso really needs to perform, and I'm not gonna go easy on it today. If you're new to open back, said simply, it just means the outside of the ear cup is not a closed off design. This allows you to hear the world around you mixed with your audio, and it usually results in a big airy presentation that makes your soundstage or the 360 degree audio world around you feel bigger. They also usually stay cooler on your head for longer because you don't have that heat trapped in there creating little sweatshops for your ears. Potential downsides is that they all leak sound to varying degrees, meaning everybody can hear what you're hearing and you can hear distracting stuff in the environment around you, barking dogs, neglected children, whatever. It's safe to think of an open back design as the polar opposite of active noise canceling. So first impressions, this looks class. You get a nice zippered hard shell case that displays the headset rotated. There's a mesh pocket in the top. It's got a splitter, a 3.5 millimeter cable, and a 3.5 cable with the mic wired in line. There's evidently also an optional balanced 4.4 millimeter cable available, but sadly they didn't send one with my shipment. The cables are sleeved in a two-tone braided fabric. They look really nice, but they're not as flexible as some other offerings. They're a little stiff and they do hold their creases. They feel really durable, but we'll talk more about them in a sec. Aside from a little slip on windscreen for the mic, that's it for inclusions. The headset itself looks really nice. It's all black, gray, silver, no RGB. Even the sail logo is really understated. It sits behind the grills, so the light has to hit it just a certain way. There's little reflective beveling across the top of the forks, little sail logos there in matte black on gunmetal. The headband frame has this little fabric wrapped insert on the top. The interior of the headband is the same fabric, but with these little star appliques, the whole package just looks really handsome. Like, everything on the frame is modular too. The top piece comes off, the headband itself, the outside grills, the ear pads. So I have to imagine there's gonna be plenty of aftermarket customization options coming down the road. It's all just held together with a bunch of little plastic clips. It definitely sounded and felt like I was gonna break it at times, but miraculously I got all the way through filming with no issues. Gaming headsets have a unique challenge because they have to hit just the right balance between durability and lightweight because they're generally worn for more extended periods of time. So this headset is a lot of plastic, which isn't unusual. The only metal here appears to be the spring steel headband and the screws and the hinges. It doesn't feel really sturdy in hand. I wouldn't want to drop this. And it's not the lightest at 335 grams on my scale. The HD 58X comes in at 253 grams, PC 38X at 250, 238 grams for the HD 560S, and the DT 990 at 283 grams, which arguably has the best build quality of the bunch. But weight is only one component of comfort, and luckily the clamping force, or how hard a headphone squeezes your head, is pretty minimal here. I've worn these for three or four hour sessions, no problem at all. The ear pads themselves are round versus oval. They've got a diameter of 59.5 millimeters. They're pretty shallow at a depth of 20 millimeters. My ears touch all over the inside of these things, top, bottom, and all over the outside of my ear as well. So that's something to be aware of if you're sensitive to that. These are perforated leather on the very inside and like a sport mesh on the outside. They're a little scratchy, not as bad as like the old Ship 9500s, but not too far off. It is important to note here that these are keyed differently than the pads on the existing Virtuoso wireless sets. So no pad swapping with those or any of the wicked cushions that you may have picked up for them. Outside of that, the only thing that really caught my eye about the design is a complete lack of any on-head controls here except for the mic mute. There's no volume control here. That's pretty standard on a headphone, but something I really like to see on a gaming product. So talking about this mic, the first thing to understand is this is just an inline 3.5 millimeter plug-in here. So this is going to plug right into your controller, your motherboard audio, any audio interface, even your streamer stuff like GoXLR, Roland Bridgecast, WaveXLR, those are going to work great. Any of your gaming-centric DAC 
amps or external sound cards like stuff from Sound Blaster or Epos while they're still around, those are going to work good too. But when you get into higher end audio file DAC amps, the kind of stuff you would want to plug a $200 headphone into, that's where you're going to be a lot more limited with units that actually have a mic in. Only the terribly named Shit Hell and Mayflower's Arc Mark II really come to mind. The good news is that these are 32 ohms, so you'll want something to provide a really clean signal, but it's not necessary to throw a lot of power at these to get the best out of them. I think this mic sounds pretty good. We've heard what Corsair can do before, and this is wired, so my expectations were pretty high. It is unidirectional, so it does a pretty good job with off-axis stuff or filtering out some of the background noise. It's really clear. Like, there's lots of clarity here. I just don't get a lot of tone or depth. Like, it doesn't really bring out a lot of the bass in my voice, and that is kind of disappointing, especially because we've heard what Corsair can do on some of their wireless stuff. I'd also really recommend using the windscreen on this mic. For whatever reason, I get tons of nose breath in this thing. I have played with a lot of different positions and rotations on the capsule. It just comes through really bad, and nobody on your team wants that really bad ASMR. If you're on the console side, it's going to sound pretty much like this. This is just plugged directly into my motherboard with nothing else going on in terms of processing. If you are on the PC side, there is some various software you can use to help shape the sound of your mic. The Wave XLR software is really solid because it uses VSTs and you can really shape the sound of the mic. The catch there is that you have to be using an authorized Elgato device, and at that point, you can pretty much use any headset plugged into that. The mic on the closest direct competitor, the PC38X, sounds considerably better to me. A lot full a lot better tone. Now the big disadvantage here is that the mic is permanently attached. You can't take this off at all, which is going to look pretty weird if you're using this with an XLR or a USB mic. It's also worth pointing out that these have really generous oval ear pads that are really comfortable. Early versions of the PC37X and PC38X were really tight with the clamping force. This latest version, the black version, relaxes that a bit. It's not quite as comfortable as the Virtuoso Pro, but it's pretty close. And anytime we're talking open back, there's always people that are concerned that we're going to get some sound bleed from the headphones phone back into the microphone. While I'm talking to you now, I've got a replay of a very loud match going on here at about the same volume I would normally use if I were playing. Listening to this, yeah, you can hear a little bit of that back, but when you look at the waveform, it's so small that if you're using any kind of hardware or software noise gate at all, it's not going to be an issue. Unfortunately, something that is going to be an issue is this cable. I was going to talk about this later in the video, but after listening to these mic tests back, I kept hearing this sawing noise. I thought maybe it was my beard brushing against the mic screen, which is something that does happen from time to time. It's not. It's the cable. The phonics on this thing are crazy. Anytime you bump this or brush it, it rubs on anything. You can hear it in the headphone, but I was unaware that you can also hear this come through the mic. So that is something that Corsair really needs to take a look at. So this headset has 50 millimeter drivers and they're made of graphene, which we saw in the latest Logitech headset and seems to be the next big buzzword in gaming audio. Open back designs aren't generally known for low or punchy bass because there's nothing to keep the bass trapped in there. It just kind of escapes out into the air. You have to have some finesse when you're tuning these. These feel like they have a pretty healthy bump in the bass to overcome this. This works out well on some tracks and on others it's too much. I don't mean it's too much bass, I mean it's asking the driver to do too much, so I get some low end distortion on certain tracks. But it also doesn't strike me as the really common V-shaped EQ we get with gaming stuff where you have emphasis on the bass and emphasis on the highs and then it's kind of notched out in the middle. The highs aren't as bright or defined as like the 560S or the DT990. They feel pushed back in the mix and the high mids seem to have a bump, like vocals always come through really strong. I really wish I could see See these measured because there's definitely something weird going on with the highs. They sound veiled or dull on some tracks, but I still get a harshness on certain frequencies. So bass bump, high mids bump, veiled highs is how I would describe the tuning. I tested these on a variety of different audio hardware and across different genres, and at no point was I really blown away with the musical experience. They're detailed and the drivers may be technically proficient, but there is an issue with the tuning here. For all the above mentioned headphones and headsets, here's how they stack up for me for music. Now for gaming, there is no one size fits all even when you're talking about strictly FPS because every game EQs differently for stuff like footsteps. This is why being able to tweak EQ is so important, so I wish we would have had some kind of software support here for EQ presets without needing to be plugged into specific hardware or a specific Elgato device. As I mainly play COD, that's what we're looking at today. Now, how well a headphone performs in competitive FPS comes down to EQ and how well the drivers are matched to help create directional awareness or imaging. And the Virtuoso does a pretty good job here in stock form. It's got solid imaging and quiet 
quieter, slower paced free for all matches and it does a good job of not getting too overloaded in matches where there's a lot going on. That open back design really helps to sell the idea of distance too. Of the headphones I've mentioned so far today, it's middle of the pack. The HD560S is the clear winner for me in this group. The PC38X comes in slightly above the Virtuoso. The 58X is a little too skewed towards the low end. It comes off a little dull on the high. The DT990 is a little too spacey or airy in the mix for COD. It left me confused sometimes with regards to distance and direction. Talking single player gaming, these are really solid. That clumsy bass tuning that I heard with music listening helps a lot with the immersive factor. Like ships taking off in Starfield have some real weight to them. Again, that open back design really excels here, especially in worlds that have a really big scale because it just makes the worlds feel that much bigger. I totally understand that the intent of this headset is to be used inside an Elgato ecosystem, but for those people using it standalone, it would have been a really cool inclusion at this price point to have like a small USB dongle that would have been able to unlock some enhanced audio and mic EQing. As is, you can use the Sonar software from SteelSeries for this if you're on the PC, and I'm hearing that there's console support now, but I haven't experimented with that yet. The conclusion gets a bit tricky for me here. If you review this product in a vacuum, that is no consideration for any outside products or price points, it's solid, but it just doesn't feel like $200 to me. It's tougher when you start comparing it to other stuff because of everything we've looked at today, the stuff I would normally recommend if somebody asked me, there's not technically a direct comparison here. Like none of the headphones we looked at today are compatible with a V-Moda Boom Pro mic. Adding a mod mic is still your best bet, but the lowest point of entry there is $55 and you still have an additional cable to manage. The PC38X comes the closest, but again, it lacks a detachable mic. It's also currently priced at $139, so you have to weigh in how important that is to you. This is still my strongest recommendation if you need a mic on your headset and you're okay with it being non-detachable. On the Virtuoso, you can remove that mic, but that open back design means you're not gonna wear it in public anyway. The HD560S clears it for gaming and does very well with music, particularly if your device has a bass boost. But again, there's no mic. If you already have your mic figured out, this is my strongest recommendation. It's easily one of the best headphones under $200 and it's a lot more comfortable out of the box than most Sennheisers. So final word, the Virtuoso Pro performs better than pretty much every every gaming headset I've heard at $200 or under, it's just not gonna compete with audiophile headphones for music listening. The mic is strangely mid, given what we've heard from them before, but the fact that it's included and detachable makes it really versatile for a variety of different setups. It's really comfortable, and in its main focus, gaming, it holds its own against some pretty stiff competition. And it looks really nice and wears pretty slim on the head if you're gonna use it for streaming. Psychologically, I just don't like it at $199. I would've liked it better at $179 or $169. If having that mic on your headset is really important to you or something about the versatility of this works for what you have in mind, great. Otherwise, that same old good advice is still true. Spend your money on an audiophile headphone or IEM instead. If you got some value out of today's video, please drop me a like or consider subscribing or maybe check out some of the new merch if you haven't already. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you all in the next one. Stay up.